Welcome back to a new video. In this video, we are going to do data cleaning using Python Pandas. We have a data set about exam scores, and we have features like math score, writing score, reading score, and parent education, and also features like test preparation. So what we are going to do is, we are going to go step by step, we are going to load our data set, then we are going to clean the data, and we are going to export the cleaned version of the data set. So we are going to start with a raw data set, dirty data, and we are going to finish with a clean data set. I found this data set from Kaggle and I'm going to add its link in the description of this video so you can download it and join me in the coding part. Let's start coding. So this is the page that we are going to use for downloading our data set. I'm going to leave this link in the description of this video and you can just download it from there. You can just use this download button. So let's take a look at the data set for a second and then we are going to jump into our code editor. Okay, so let's start by saying, okay, got it. And we can see exam scores for students at a public school. We have the information. This data set includes scores from three test scores of students at a fictional public school and a variety of personal and socioeconomic factors that may have interaction effects upon them. So here's check our data set. We are going to use the original data with more rows. So I want to use the original and here's our data sets, general information. We will see the columns, data types, etc. at the data cleaning part. So I'm not going to talk about all the columns in here and you can just download this data from this download button. So just download it and put it to the same file that you're going to create your notebook file or Python script and you'll be ready to go. And I'm going to re-record at VS Code screen. So we are at the VS Code main screen. You can use any code editor that you want. It can be Google Colab Notebooks or Spider, maybe PyCharm, but I prefer VS Code. So I'm at the home page. And as you can see in here, I put the Excel file in here and I'm going to use that. So I will say notebook dot IPMB and I'm going to create a Jupyter notebook. Then I will say select kernel Python environments Python 3.11 and let's start by importing the pandas firstly. We are going to use it for data cleaning. So in here at the first place I'm going to say pandas version. So you can just install the same version for making all the codes run in the video that you see because Sometimes some codes, some code structures can change with library version. In pandas, I don't think it's going to happen, but it can. So you can just do pip install from terminal pandas equals to, and you can specify the version like this. If one of the codes are not working. So I'm just going to delete that. And we are going to start by using pandas read CSV and we are going to load our data from here. I'm going to say copy to this. And then I'm going to set this to something like data and I'm going to make it run. So after making it run, I'm just going to say data.head for seeing the first five entry and our data set looks great. Also, you can specify this number. It's defaultly five, but you can just write three for seeing the first three rows like this. Or you can say tail for seeing the last three rows. And we can just say head again. And I'm going to delete this number and I'm going to make it rerun. Okay, so let's talk about our data set. We have unnamed in next column in here, gender, ethnic group, parent education, lunch type, test preparation, math score, reading score, writing score. Okay. And we have the data types like integer, string, 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 and three integers at the end. So let's just get the general shape of the data, column and row count. We are going to do that by data.shape. And we can see that we have 30,000 rows and nine columns. Okay, we can check these columns by data.columns2. And we can see the column list. Also, we can just say data that info for getting general information about the data types in the data set. Also, we have the range index in here, non null counts, data types in here, memory usage. Okay, so I have few steps 
for data cleaning I'm going to paste them in here and we are going to do them in this video one by one so at the first place we have the deleting redundant columns so let's start with that I will call the data dot head again and let's pick the ones that we are that we want to drop so I'm going to create something like after selecting data dot columns and specifying this with two I'm going to say something like columns and it's going to be something like it's going to be a list and we are going to pick the columns that we want to drop in here I don't want this for sure the index column so I will 100% add that and let's ethnic group can be a good choice in here we can delete that and we can also delete the lunch type I guess so this tree will be enough I'm going to make it run I'm going to create my list as drop columns and how we are going to drop our columns is we are going to say data that drop actually let me call the data in here firstly data head one so we are going to say data drop and we are going to say columns let's for example let's drop the gender so when I do that we are going to see that we, we are going to have a data frame with gender removed but when I make it run this again we still have the gender on the original data because we didn't modify it, our data in here we can either do data accuracy this will change the original data frame or we can use the keyword in place for setting our chains okay I'm just going to delete this in place thing and in here in the column side we can also give a list so we created the list they drop columns I'm going to put it in here and I'm going to rerun this cell and we are going to have the data frame without the columns that we wanted to drop great so I'm just going to use in place accuracy true and after that before making this run I'm going to call the data again and you will see we will have all these columns and I'm just going to make this cell run and then I'm going to recall the data and you will see that we have the data frame that we want with six columns great so we dropped three okay let's get our list back and keep with the next task so it's renaming the columns okay what we can do in here is I'm going to call the data again and let's say let's rename this one and this one so we are going to say data that's rename and we will say columns and in here we are going to give a dictionary with the old column name first like parent education like this and I want it to be like parent with space education okay and also I want to test preparation in the same way test prep to test preparation and I'm going to make it run so you are going to see that we have the columns that we wanted okay it seems great but I want a little bit different thing so I'm going to say like I'm going to put underscores like this and we are going to have a new data frame with underscores in the column names but we need to modify the data frame that we are using so I will say in place equals to true and before making this run I'm going to say data in here and you will see we will have the old column names and I'm going to make this one run then I'm going to call the data and you will see they are changed okay I'm getting my task list back in here and the next step is dropping the duplicates so let's check the duplicates for checking the duplicates we can say data.duplicated and this is going to return as a panda series like true with trues and falses and you can check the type of this like that and series and what you can do is you can easily manipulate that like you can use value counts like this and the true count in here is the duplicated rows 
also you can do like I'm just going to remove this you can just do dot head and let's say four you can just check the first four entries if they are duplicated or not or you can say tail let's say 4d and you can check the last 4d like we have true in this index and I'm just going to make it like that and you can just choose that sum for getting the general count like we have this amount of duplicated rows so we can clean them by data that drop duplicates and we need to use in place accuracy true because we are going to modify the original data frame and when I say data dot duplicated dot sum we are going to get the zero in here but we need to do another thing when I call the data again you are going to see that we have 29,000 rows right now but the index is around 30,000 again so we need to reset the index and the last index should be this minus one because index is in Python starts from zero. So we have the, we need to have the 29,284 index number at the last place. So for that, we will say data dot reset index. And then I'm going to say in here, actually we can just say in place equals true, but I'm going to do a different thing. Now we have this index column and the index numbers that we want. Like as I said, it ends with 29,284. So I will say, I'm going to drop this one in here. I will say drop and I'm going to specify the columns like index. And after that, we are going to have the data frame that we wanted with the index numbers we wanted. So I'm just going to make it saved like this data equals to this new data frame and I'm going to recall the data and we can see that we have the data frame that we want. Great. Okay, let's get our list back. The next step is removing the NA values. So I'm just going to call the data again and how we can check the NA values is we can use something like data that is NA and it's going to return us booleans cell wise like that and we can just use that sum again for seeing the NA value draws so we don't have any great okay if we had any we need to use data that drop NA and we can just set in place equals true and it will make all the NA value draws delete okay let me get the task list back and the next step is cleaning individual columns okay so i'm going to call the data again and let's just check like let's say let's say we want the f and m instead of female and male so how we can do that is firstly i'm going to call the data gender like this we are going to have it in here and let's say like we want f for female and m for male so how we can do that is we can just use data gender dot apply and we can just say lambda x accused f if x is accused female else male like this and I'm just going to make it run and as you can see we have the data we want right now but I'm call I'm going to call the data again it's not modified so how we are going to set this is we are going to set this like data gender like this and after saving that we are going to see that we are going to F and M have F and M in here so I'm just going to make it run and it's transformed clearly great okay great so at the next step i'm going to recall my task list and we are at the last task we have also i'm going to make it like that so our last task is check for some more transformations so let me call the data again and in here i want to just add this tree together and check 
if they are more than 240 or not. So above 240 means AD on average. So AD plus three. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create something like data total score. And it's going to be data math score, data reading score, plus data writing score. And I'm just going to call the data again. And we have the values in here. So let's do data and create a new column as success. And we are going to decide the success based on about 240 or not. So we will say data total score dot apply lambda x success if x is greater than 240 else fail so i'm just going to make it run and i'm going to call the data and we have the fail success count in here great so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to say data success dot value counts and we can see that also i need this in here and we can see that we have success fail success we have this amount of success this amount of fail so the fail is more than success great what happens if we change this to 200 and let's say let's say it was 80 but this time let's do 70 so it's going to be 210 okay let's do that and see the success count and i'm going to make it run again and it's like 50 50 right now great so we cleaned our data and we finished our task list like i'm going to recall we deleted the redundant columns we named the columns dropped duplicates removed the na values cleaned individual columns and checked for some more transformations so as the final step i'm going to show you we have the new data frame the clean data frame but how we can export that we can just do that by data that too if you want to excel we need to do like data to excel and we can just specify like data cleaned excel dot xlsx and if you don't want this indexes to save you can just do index equals to false i generally prefer that and at the csv side if you want to save it as csv you can just do data dot to csv and you can do data to csv cleaned csv file dot csv and you can just say index false by default it's true i'm going to make it run and we are going to see that we will have the new two files in here great so that was all for the coding part of this data cleaning video if you come to here i will be really happy if you can like the video thanks for watching let's get to the outro thanks for watching the video i'm sharing two or three new videos every week about data science and python programming you can subscribe to my channel for more videos like this i shared a free data science bootcamp where i teach python pandas numpy matplotlib plotly seaborn and scikit-learn with three projects the video is about seven hours and it's completely free you can just reach to that video from the cards of this video or the link in the description